just taken delivery of a 2021 Toyota Tacoma four-wheel drive and I am taking it out just to get an overall feel for it before we dig into it with Rough Country products. Uh, full disclosure, I'm used to driving older Jeeps and one-ton trucks. This definitely feels uh, like a passenger car, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, the ride and the handling both feel that way to me. This particular model isn't a premium model. Uh, for instance, it has a steel wheel package. We're changing those. Toyota's got a great product. It's going to be a great platform to build on. We're going to take this and make a very well-rounded truck out of it. We're going to make it something that you can daily drive or uh, overland on the weekends. We're going to bring the cool factor up to a 10 on it. This is the build-up featuring a 2021 Toyota Tacoma 4x4. We're going to start our build off by installing our three and a half inch kit. This kit is available for the 05 to 21 Tacoma, replaces the factory upper control arms as well as the rear leaf spring pack. There are also some options in way of struts and shocks and I'd like to talk to you about that for a minute before we delve into the install. Let's take a look at some of the options we have for this kit. Starting out over here, we'll go entry level. We've got a strut spacer that's going to mount to the factory strut. You're going to pull the factory strut out during disassembly of the truck, bolt this to the upper strut, and when you reassemble the truck, this will go back in as one unit, provide your lift. Out back, we've got our N3 shock. This is our entry level premium shock. It's going to give you stock or better ride, and it's a great option. From there, you can move up to our N3 loaded strut. This is a fully assembled strut, coil, and for strut hardware. You'll get all of your lift from here. It's specifically designed and valved for the vehicle and the lift. It's gonna ride much better than a factory strut with the spacer on it. You can pair this with the N3 shock that I just spoke of, or you can upgrade to our V2. This is our mid-level premium shock, aluminum body, larger piston, monotube shock, performance design and if your budget allows definitely worth the money and finally what we've chosen to go with is our ultimate which is our vertex eight-way adjustable shock in the front it's a coil over shock in the rear it's a reservoir shock like this eight positions of adjustment one being the softest eight being the firmest robust heavy duty I'm joint on both ends just a great way to go and the ultimate in this three and a half inch kit all right, up front we've got our aluminum control arm that's going to allow you to run the lift and keep the geometry correct at the ball joint. Just below that we've got our sway bar relocation mounts. These are going to drop the frame mounts of the sway bar down and forward. And finally we've got our vertex 8-way adjustable coilover shocks and the bracketry to mount the reservoir. And for the rear of the truck we've got our lifted rear replacement leaf springs. The U-bolts and hardware to install those. And we've got our Rough Country 8-way adjustable vertex rear shock hardware and bracket for the reservoir. So before we lift, we're going to get a baseline of our ride height, and I'm going to show you how to do that using a simple tape measure. So we center it on the front hub, and we bring it up to the bottom of the wheel well, and that is going to be our baseline measurement, 21 and a quarter. <laughs> All right, we've got the truck up on the lift. We've got the tires off. We've got Jeremy from sales here to help me out. And now what we're gonna do is get ready to install the kit. And with everything torqued down, that completes the front end of this kit. And what a great looking kit it is. Remember what it looked like before? Me neither, completely unremarkable. But now, it stands out. I almost hate putting a wheel and tire on that. But we've got a great looking wheel and tire coming for it. Now we're gonna get to the back, add those complete leaf springs and the Vertex shocks for the rear, and that's gonna complete the kit. Speaking of tires, let's take a look at some options and what we're gonna go with and why. So this is the tire that came on the truck from the factory. I would classify this as a street car tire. Uh, 
It's going to ride great on the road. It's going to be nice and quiet. This is strictly a street tire and in two wheel drive, this is going to get you stuck on wet grass. This has large lugs. It looks great on a lifted vehicle. It's going to perform really well off road, but the downside to that is it's going to it's going to wear faster because of the large lugs. If you take both of those and put them together, you get a hybrid. In this case, we're going with the Nitto Ridge Grappler. It has a really aggressive sidewall, so it looks great on a lifted vehicle. Uh, the pattern is still aggressive looking, but it's designed so it's going to be quieter on the street, give you a better ride, but still give you off-road performance. That's why we chose it. We're gonna put it on the Toyota. The wheel we've chosen is the KMC Mesa and they refer to this as a black with gray tint. It's a 17 by nine with a 12 millimeter offset. Let's talk about offset for a second because sometimes people get confused by it. Offset simply refers to the point at which the mounting surface is offset from the actual center line of the wheel. This is a negative 12 millimeter offset so if this was zero, dead center of the wheel, our mounting point is shifted 12 millimeters back to the back of the wheel, which in effect pushes the wheel 12 millimeters out, so it's a little confusing. If it was a positive 12, the mounting surface would be pushed out 12 millimeters, effectively bringing the wheel in 12 millimeters. So negative brings the wheel out, positive brings the wheel in. There are as many different offsets are, as there are wheels. There's negative 12, negative 24, negative 44, negative 51, and so on. And that really brings the wheel out. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, you can go positive 12, positive 18, positive 24. It's gonna bring the wheel in. You just have to be careful and make sure you're not gonna rub on any components. Most people, at the very least, like the wheel flush with the fender well. Uh, the trend is going for more negative offset to bring the wheel out. 12 is a nice compromise between the two and I think it's going to look great on the Toyota. Alright Jeremy, if you'll grab one, we'll go ahead and get all these mounted up, set this thing on the ground and see how it looks. So we've got the wheels and tires mounted up. We're snugging them up with the impact. We'll get it on its own weight, torque them to the manufacturer's specs, and be good to go. Let's get a ride height check with the lift. 24 and three quarters. Dead on three and a half inches of lift. Nice. <laughs> now that we've got the lift, wheels and tires installed. The next step are steps. Now this truck does have a set of factory steps and that's okay if you're in the stock things, but we're not. We're gonna upgrade to something more durable, uh, a little more utilitarian and quite frankly, better looking. Rough Country currently has five designs available for the Tacoma. We're gonna take a quick look at each one. First up, we've got the traditional tube Nerf style step. This is a great look. I actually run this on one of my daily drivers and I love it. It's a one piece steel construction, powder coat. Uh, you've got a good footing, a nice big stirrup to put your foot into. Next up, we've got our AL2. It's uh, all aluminum, one piece, very durable, very lightweight, and very corrosion resistant. Also has a durable powder coat, and we are very excited about this. We love this step. Behind it, we've got our XL2. This is actually an angular version of the Nerf step, I would say. Uh, it's uh, also steel, durable powder coat, got plenty of space for your foot in the stirrup. This actually drops down further than any of the other steps. So if you've got a very large lift on your truck, this is probably the step you wanna go with. Behind it, we've got the SD2. It's got more of an encapsulated step, almost a running board, but not quite. It's a little more low profile. So if you're going for that look, this is also made out of steel. 
durable powder coat on it. You can't go wrong with the SD2. And finally, we've got the HD2. This is more of your traditional running board style, just jazzed up. The styling on it is great. You've got separate tread plates for front and rear passengers to get in. If you prefer more of the traditional running board style, then this is definitely the way to go. We've chosen to go with the AL2. The design, the lightweight, ease of installation really just put it to the top of the list. And also, it's going to complement some of the other things we have planned for the truck perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and get these prepped, get the truck up on the lift, and install the AL2s. With the AL2 step from Rough Country installed, we've got a much more aggressive look, much more customized look over the factory step. Not only that, we've got a surface that's going to grip a boot better than the factory plastic surface. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to deal with some functionality of the truck. One of the best things about a truck is the space in the bed. You can add tools, implements whatever you need but inevitably you're gonna get cluttered and you need some sort of solution to secure these items and preferably secure them up and out of the way so you can add more items uh, we've got that solution with the rough country molly rack it comes in three different panels we've got a cab side panel passenger side panel and a driver side panel you can order those individually or in any combination you want we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff out of the bed and install the panels today. The first step is going to be to assemble the cab side panel. It comes in three pieces from Rough Country. We'll get that assembled on the bench and then go ahead and install it in the truck. So as you can see with basic hand tools and a little bit of your spare time, you can install our molly rack system and declutter your bed, get everything its place and know where it's going to be when you need it. All right, so we have a system where we can secure items into the bed and not have to worry about them. We're going to take it one step further and secure those items from prying eyes and also protect them from the elements with the Rough Country Flush Mount Hard Tonneau Cover. All right, and that is all there is to it. Once the rails are installed, it requires no tools to mount or dismount the cover. Now that we've got the clamp secured, we'll simply fold it out. And if you look here, these are spring-loaded catches. So we'll fold the first half down. They'll click into place. If you need to remove it, you'll pull this to release one on each side, you can bring it back up, you can close the tailgate, weather seals across the top, and now everything in the bed is protected from prying eyes, from light fingers, and from the elements. Next up for modifications on the Tacoma and a little protection, we've got the Rough Country heavy duty floor mats as well as the neoprene seat covers. These floor mats drop right in, a perfect fit, fit nice and snug. All right, we're going to install the driver's side front seat cover. It slips right on. It's one piece minus the headrest cover and buckles underneath the seat. So first thing we'll do is remove the headrest. All that's left is to install the headrest and that will complete our interior upgrades on the Tacoma.
So one of the final things we need to do is calibrate our speedometer to our new tire size. In order to do that, we've got the Tacoma specific speedometer calibrator. It's an inline calibrator that actually connects between the cluster and the ECU on the Tacoma, which means we need to open this dash up and get behind the cluster, unplug it before installing the unit. First step is gonna to be to remove these trim panels. It's gonna feel like you're breaking it, but you're not. Now our speedometer is programmed and will read correctly with the new tire size. It looks so good. I want to do some more to it. Can we keep going? Can we do some more? You know what? We did think of something else. We're going to go ahead and put our hybrid bumper for the third generation Tacoma on. I've got Mike, our rock star engineer from R&D. He actually designed the bumper and we're going to get that installed. And with that, the installation of the hybrid front bumper for the Tacoma is complete. And with very little effort, we went from stock to middleweight aggressive to heavyweight aggressive. And I think the way that this flows with the factory lines really sets this Tacoma off. That's the last thing we're gonna do to the Tacoma at this phase. Let's go ahead and get it outside and get a little mud on the tires. So before pulling off the lot, even though it was a 4x4, it did not seem all that capable. Now I feel confident that it'll handle whatever we throw at it, be a city street, on the trail, or even cruising down the highway. Let's go over exactly what we did to it and why. For the lift on the Tacoma, we went with the Rough Country 3.5 inch Vertex lift. This lift replaced the shocks, the struts, the coils the leaf springs, and the front upper control arms. When it comes to lift kits, a lot of times you want to go big or go home. We actually chose a three and a half because we're going to do a lot of daily driving. We wanted to keep a low center of gravity for uh, overlanding. And overall, I'm, I'm really glad we went with the three and a half. We chose the Vertex setup, so we have eight-way adjustable front and rear shocks and struts. We got a full replacement leaf spring in the rear. It's not lifted by a block. And in the front, we replaced the control arms, keeping the geometry correct. With the three and a half inch lift and the larger tires, we went ahead and added our AL2 steps. They drop down further than the factory steps to allow ease into the interior. Speaking of the interior, we went ahead and added our floor liners as well as our seat covers to make sure everything stays real nice. Coming around to the back of the truck, we added Rough Country's low profile hard bed cover going to add security, a great finished look and protection from the elements of anything in the bed of the truck. And what we have in the bed of the truck is the Rough Country Molly Rack system. The Molly Racks allow us to strap items to them, keep them secure in the bed and out of the way so we can load things onto the bed floor without an issue. We did a lot. We had a lot of changes during the build up. Different items we wanted to add, some had to be taken away. Uh, one that we added at the last minute, and I'm really glad we did, is our hybrid front bumper for the Tacoma. This particular bumper has the LED lighting option. We've installed optional D-rings and also an optional winch. So if you'd like to transform your Tacoma, Jeep, or any other vehicle, be sure to check out roughcountry.com. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching this episode of The Build Up. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and click that notification bell for more content like this. From all of us here at Rough Country, we'll see you next time.